Hi, I'm Matt Gleason. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. We discuss art and the periphery of its influence here on the show. I have a couple of guests today. The first, uh, he's a return guest. We've been doing the show so long now, we're having people, we're having like alumni. This is like an alumni meeting. Uh, but I'm proud, I'm happy, I'm thrilled to have Mark Stephen Greenfield as my guest. Mark, Good welcome. Good to see you again. So, uh, since we last spoke, since you were last, uh, uh, since you were our guest last, uh, we were speaking, you were, you were about to go on a major residency. Yes. And then, and then some newsworthy events happened <laughs> right yes. around your residency. Uh, and I remember you left for the residency and then it was like, okay. So tell us part two. And don't worry, if you didn't see part one, it's one of those sequels that you can just get into. So, so tell us what happened. Well, I, went to, I was at, uh, in residence at the McColl Center for Art Plus Innovation. It's a wonderful residency. If you ever get, I mean, anybody should, you should apply for this thing. Give you a studio, they give you a condo, you get a stipend, they give you a supply budget. I was able to hire an assistant. It's great, okay? Um, anyway, I'm there cooling my heels. Uh, they had the uh, police shooting. Wait, wait, now, where is this? Where is this? The is, I'm sorry. This is all in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. Uh, which is a wonderful city, really. Uh, Charlotte is the banking capital of the South. Ooh. And so there's a lot of money there, but there's oh also a lot of poverty there. And it's been there for a considerable amount of time. So um, when they had this police shooting there, um, t the town just blew up. And everybody thinks that the police shooting was, that it was all about the police shooting, but in reality, it was about the disparity between rich and poor in Charlotte. And it's a very noticeable gap there? It's, I mean, you know, you've got these incredible restaurants on Tryon Street, and you're looking out the window at people in sleeping bags. It's wow. that, and they've been, they've been in sleeping bags for a generation. Okay, they, don't, a they don't see any way out of it, you know? So when the town blew up, it was, it was a shock to most people, you know, because they really didn't expect that to happen because on a lot of levels, Charlotte is probably one of the most progressive towns in North Carolina. Ah. Um, I mean, you know, went overwhelmingly for Hillary. Uh, so the town blew up and there's this riot. My mother's texting me and calling me saying, you know, do not get involved in this. It's like, don't worry, I'm cooling my heels in the condo. I'm watching it on television. The next night, they brought the riot to me. Oh. And it was right out in front of the condo. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. Did you, did you say, well, got to join in now? <laughs> no. I took some video. Yeah. Okay, but I still kept my distance. Um, it, was, it was peaceful. Uh, the second night. First night was a little dicey. Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it got me to thinking about uh, that disparity and how you address that in art. Uh, so I did this piece that was called um, The Charlotte Observer, which uh, coincidentally is the name of the local newspaper in ah, Charlotte. Great double in time, um, yeah. And it, it, basically it was, uh, I go back to that whole thing of the Agoons that I think I talked about once before, these, these uh, spirits, uh, these entities in Brazil that actually channel the spirits of ancestors. Um, and so I have this, this portrait of this guy, he's an Agoon and he's carrying two megaphones because um, on the one hand, the establishment wants to be heard. On the other hand, the people want to be heard too. And I think that energy actually needs to go through an intermediary. And in so many instances, these agoons are like spiritual intermediaries. And you see the artist as a spiritual inter intermediary in a lot of these. Exactly, things. exactly. And so I'm just, you know, trying to interpret this. Tell us what we're looking at behind you. Did you do this artwork at the residency? No, uh, but it was, I didn't do it at the residency. I actually did it here, but it was. It's based on your. From time to time, I get um, the urge to delve back into abstraction. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> the thing at, the, at this point, I, was, um, I had just been informed that I had gotten a Metro Commission uh, for the second and Broadway station. And I realized in order to do this, I was going to have to kind of change up what I was doing. And so all of these were kind of exercises to um, kind of loosen me up to get to, get to the point where I could do something that would- Is it gonna be a train station? It's actually, it's a regional connector. So it's gonna connect three different stations, or three different lines rather. And, and where is it located? Second and Broadway. Second and Broadway. Right. They're wow. building it now. Oh, they're, they're, it's the one, the tunnel, the, the machines do it exactly. every day. The tunnel goes, ooh, yeah, ooh. So wow. it should be finished by 2020. 
Uh, the piece that I'm doing is going to be 10 feet by 147 feet. So Long? It'll be the largest thing I've ever done, yeah. Wow, and it's like a mural sized painting? It's a mural that um, basically uh, depicts the energy behind um, an old icon that used to be here in LA called the Red Car. Ah, oh, the Red Car. The Red Car. Yeah, yeah, my parents have stories about the red car. Yeah, you know. Yeah. It, the red car actually, uh, when I relocated to LA in the early 60s, the red car was still running. And then about a year later, all of a sudden, overnight, it disappeared. Disappeared. You know. Uh, and, and there was a bit of a conspiracy. Uh, you know, th there's, there are all kinds of different stories about this. Some people say that Detroit came in and bought up all the train tracks so they could sell more cars here. Mm -hmm. The story that I'm starting to, to gel around is the idea that there were so many cars in Los Angeles that the red car wasn't efficient anymore. You know, my parents are in their 80s and, and uh, they used the red car a lot. They were, they, they were out in Santa Monica back when it was not the best part of town in the um, 30s and 40s, into the early 50s even. And they, they agreed. They, they said that the, there was no conspiracy about the red car. It's like you're driving. Everybody started getting, everybody got a car. And all of a sudden the red car, it's like, get out of my way. There's yeah. a red car, what? Yeah. You know, and it was just, you know, and you're driving, bumping over the, get rid of these tracks. We all have cars now. <laughs> so nobody understood the, the levels of pollution and that the economy might not always be so booming that everybody would have this great new right. car. Right. And so, uh, so what are we looking at here? Oh, this is actually uh, a piece, it's, uh, it's called Consequences of an Unmet Quota. Uh, back in the day when you were picking cotton, you would have to, uh, you had a quota that you had to pick every day. And if you didn't pick it, there were consequences. Uh, you could be punished, you could be whipped. The irony is that when you get blood on cotton, you can't sell it. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So I, you know, I have this, this kind of a bull whip that's back there, and then you, in the, the foreground, you see some of the cotton that actually has blood on it. So, so is this, uh, this is a painting? This is a painting. How yeah. um, big, mural size? No, it's, um, it's about 36 inches. The, the process itself is, uh, I paint on Duralar, oh. which is kind of a synthetic drafting film. Ooh. All the color is actually on the back and all the line work is on the surface. Do you hang it so the light comes through the back then? No, actually, after you paint the color, then you seal the color with uh, white paint or something like that to take away the opaqueness. Wow, wow, wow. So, uh, and what year is this? This is uh, 2016. 2016. So, um, you were with, uh, where did you show at? Um, I was showing it off ramp. Gallery. Off ramp gallery. Right. The late lamented off ramp the gallery. The late. I miss off ramp. So, so now I saw work of yours recently in Chinatown at the gallery next door to mine, uh, Gregorio Escalante Gallery. Right. It was the Black Panther show. You were in the Black Panther show. Yeah. And uh, the piece that I did actually was the piece uh, called Charlotte Observer. Ah. Yeah. And so that's an addition now, right? I did an addition of four of them. Okay. Two of them are sold. I have two. Okay. More. Yeah. Okay. Gotta love it. And that, that was a good experience. That, that was a great show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great show. Great to be a part of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting back to Charlotte, though, one of the, one of the things uh, in this residency is that you have to do a community engagement project. Ooh. And so my first inclination was to actually work with the artist in Charlotte to talk about community practice because there are not too many artists in that area that are doing community practice at so all. So are they more of the like, I'm just gonna make a pretty picture and hope to There's a lot it. of that. Okay. I mean, there is, there's a small contemporary art scene, but it's, it's still kind of in its infancy. Uh, and it's, the int interesting thing is the collectors in Charlotte are only looking for the blue chip artists. You know, so it's, it's like be, investment it's, value. Exactly. I want exactly. to buy a, I want to buy a Warhol now in case I need to sell it five years right. from now and keep, I'm right. going to park my money right. there. That's all art is to them. It's just another asset, you know, but the mint museum is, is pretty progressive and they're doing great things there. There's a place called the Harvey Gantt center for uh, African-American art and culture. That's doing a lot of great things there. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a town that's on the edge. It's, it's a very walkable town. It's a very affordable town. Uh, I think it's considered the number one town for millennials to move to at this point. Ooh, oh, oh, no. oh, oh <laughs> stay the hell away. Oh, 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 geez. Okay, well, but this community you, talk, you were talking me into it, and then, that, nope, nope, I'm staying in L.A. now. Oh, God. 
Oh, this man. community engagement project, uh, going back to that, originally it was going to be this thing talking about uh, community practice and social practice. Uh, but just before I left here, a friend of mine called me up and she said, I have a very good friend that's a pastor at a church in Charlotte and you should get in touch with him. So I called him up and we hit it off immediately and I started thinking that it would be, it would be more effective to do a community engagement project with him. Ah, the than church, the artists. Yeah. The church that he represented uh, was the, it's the oldest African-American church in Charlotte. It was built by slaves. Uh, and the thing about it is Charlotte is gentrifying so fast that the African-American community has been squeezed out of existence in a lot of places. So the, mm. um, wow. the congregation of this church is a little over 150 at this point. So what I did was uh, an installation in the church where I uh, ha had everybody in the congregation bring me photographs of their relatives who had gone to the church over the years. Uh, oh, wow. And then I also went through the church archives and copied all the photographs from all the obituaries of people who had been there. Oh, wow. Because the church, uh, what had happened was part of the church was um, joined with um, uh, Brooklyn Presbyterian which went out of existence again because of gentrification. Um, and so now it's first United Presbyterian. So I, I mounted all these photographs on church fans and then did an installation in the church with the fans. Over 450 people participated. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, so it was funny, I, I was talking to the pastor uh, a few weeks after I'd come back and he uh, said, yeah, we had a meeting the other night talking about taking the fans down, and some of the church days said, you're not taking those fans down. <laughs> oh, wow, you yeah, have <laughs> like, a permanent installation. Yeah, you know, it was never intended to be permanent, but uh, I'm is, sure at this point somebody... Is it archival? It's archival. Archival, okay, <laughs> always. In. So we have, we have more art of Marx to show. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a piece I did in Charlotte. Uh, it's called Crucilibum. Uh, the idea is that uh, there's a, so much energy out there in terms of thought, um, things that relate to meditation. So those, those marks that you see there are actually um, by characterizations of mantras. I don't talk about my meditative practice very much. I've been meditating for 40 years. Is it a transcendent? Do you do TM, it's a transcendental yeah, meditation? Yeah. Did you did you pay the? I know the Maharaji they used to charge fifteen Maharishi. bucks, and now they charge like a thousand bucks. You know, the, it's very interesting because the Maharishi became very disillusioned with TM America. Oh, really? Because they had taken something that he felt should be uh, reasonable and had monetized it to a uh -huh. point now where I think it's it's a thousand dollars to be initiated. Yeah. Something like at the time I got into it, it was thirty five dollars and a flower. And a flower. <laughs> you had to bring oh, a man. flower for your teacher as an <laughs> offering. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting because um, as of late, I've been adopting more and more of the philosophical foundations of meditation in my work. I, there's a point where uh, you become oversaturated with the politics. Oh, yeah. And um, you start to realize that that's all part of a game. And your you're, ability to affect that game is somewhat limited. And you're playing that other person's game. You're not exactly. playing your game. And the Maharishi's uh, belief was if you can get 10% of the world's population practicing some sort of spiritual um, enlightenment or some sort of spiritual program, that 10% can affect the other 90%. Ah. Okay. And so it's like if it's TM, if it's Hare Krishna, if it's Nichiren and Shoshu, if it's saying the rosary, all of these things get you to the same place. It's just getting there in a different vehicle. And so um, is that, I'm, I'm just looking at the, the, the kind of abstract kind of sunburst Those are like things. mantras. Those are, those are those your are, mantras those are the just mantras. make that over and over and over exactly. again? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so there's a lot of um, ambivalence. I'm trying to be nice. There's a lot of ambivalence towards spirituality or spiritual practice in uh, academia, academic art departments. Do you, do you run up against, you're not an academic, but do you run up against people when, if you, if you say the S word, uh, spirituality at all, does that, does that? Well, you know, the thing, the minute you say spirituality, people are going to, uh, they're gonna have their own picture of what that is in their heads. Not always a good picture. Not always a good picture. And that's why I don't talk about it too much, you know? Um, it was, just, it was just recently that I've started feeling comfortable talking about it. I, I was interviewed by uh, Edgar Arsenault, you know, and I, we were talking about it, and he says, how come I've never heard about you? You've never said anything about this. You've never 
mention the fact that you're in, because it is at the, I, I understand your work better as a result of that. Do, does Edgar Arsenault have a streaming live web show? I don't know. <laughs> no, what, did he, what did he interview? What was he interviewing you for? Uh, this was at uh, this was at USC. Oh, okay, for the archives. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I think it was videotaped too. Okay. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Competition's coming. They're coming. We're gonna improve the show. Abel, Abel, improve the show. More, more whistles and bells. Okay. So um, let's. We've got more art, and you're prolific. How many artworks would you say you do a year? Actually, I do a lot fewer now. Um, a few really? years ago, I was curating an exhibition, and it caused me to have to uh, do a lot of studio visits. I did over 60 studio visits. Ugh. Okay, it was wow. brutal. And the thing about it is, I'd go to the studio, and these are artists that I had known since I was a teenager, in some instances, and I would see work in their studio that I remember seeing as a teenager. Ah. And, you know, they haven't sold it. They can't discount it. They can't give it away. It just sits there. And, and I went back just, and, and no one ever throws it away. Nobody <laughs> throws it away. And I went back and I looked at the, you know, the work that I had amassed in my inventory and I says, I don't want to be like that. Ah. You know? So I, I started intentionally finding people who had been supportive of my work for a long time uh, that I knew couldn't afford the work. And I just made presents to a lot of people. Wow. Got wow. rid of a, a bunch of work and then took the, the tact of actually doing fewer pieces but spending longer on them. Okay. You know, so quality instead of quantity. Exactly. So now I'm doing things that um, the average person would consider pretty uh, dense, elaborate. Um, yeah, pretty obsessive compulsive. As well, we're looking at some here, right? <laughs> how, how many hours have gone into this? I'm assuming this is a painting, right? This is a painting. Okay. This is this is Charlotte Observer. This okay, is what great. I was so about. you did this at the residency. I did or this did at you the to, residency. You, you finished it there too. Finished it there. Yeah. How, how many hours are we looking uh, at here? Probably about two and a half, three weeks. Wow. But the pieces that I'm working on now for the show that'll be up in September, uh, on an average, I work on those for about two months. Where are you showing in September? Uh, Laura Schlesinger. Laura Schlesinger. Right. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be great. Bergamon Station. Bergamon Station. The September show? That's the September Ooh, show. Hey, all right. And That's... then uh, in August, um, a group of us are showing in uh, Tokyo, in Japan. And oh, so wow. uh, 11, 12 artists from the United States are going. From California. From LA. Really? Yeah. Who organized that? Uh, Lori Eckleberry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, and are you curating anymore? Or was that a one-time thing? I'm curating an exhibition at uh, Cal State LA. It's called Legacies. And it deals with, uh, it's actually in uh, recognition of the 70th anniversary of Cal State LA. 70th anniversary. <clears throat> 70th wow. anniversary. I was an alum. I went there for graduate school. Um, and one of the things that I realized was that uh, the school doesn't get that much recognition not for some all. of the great people that have come out of it. I, I, I'm not one of the great people who came out of it, but I went through it. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I've been at other schools, like for, I, I did a little time at Cal Arts uh, teaching, and I find that um, the students at, at Cal State, actually, in many regards, were better. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, that's, that's a school that they, they basically can teach you to make the art as exactly. opposed to just talky, 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 yeah. you know. And uh, they're not so much into theory. It's like, you know, this is what you do, need to do in order to make a living yeah. at art. Yes. Okay? This is how you need totally. to present yourself. Totally. No, no. I'm, 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 Where a I'm, lot of, you know, Cal Arts, I think you get that stuff by osmosis or something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In theory. In theory. Well, you, you, you have mom and dad pay for somebody to do it for right. you. So, yeah, you know, when I went to Cal State LA, they would, they would talk about their alumni and, the, and they had two alumni. Billie Jean King and Billy Barty. Those were their big, was, those are our alumni. And you're like, huh? And then, and then it was like, they, they didn't have, uh, they yeah. didn't really push a lot of that. And I well, think you know, was, Frank Romero went there. Um, Chaz I, went there. They didn't, they didn't know who went there enough to know right. who went there. You know? Well, they're starting to pay attention to that now. now. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so that's going to, you're curating a show? Yeah. Who, who's, who's in that? What, what great um, artists from Cal State LA have been in? Have, well, have, Frank Romero. Um, Chaz, John Riddle, uh, Kathy Flood, um, Callista Lyon, wow. um, Joan Carl. Wow. Joan Carl used to be the president of the Los Angeles Art Association. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, gee, I can't think of all of them now. Linda oh, yeah, Ariola. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Linda Ariola? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, she's been, she's been on Modern Art Blitz, too. <laughs> um, now, uh, uh, I, I, wrote, I, I wrote at Cal State LA for the uh, University Times. Uh, uh, I, I had fun doing that. I used to review art shows, and I noticed right away that the, uh, the teachers, the minute I was writing art reviews, 
they were all so much nicer to me. <laughs> I was like, that's a Cal State, Cal State LA. But I think that's, that's every art department. <laughs> so, um, so, well, let's, no, so, so tell us, what this is a Charlotte Observer. How big is this piece? This is a 40 by 50. Oh, okay, so we, you know, and 50, it took two or three weeks to, two about, three weeks yeah, to put about together. three weeks to do it. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And so, um, um, and, and this is acrylic ink on Duralar. Acrylic Acrylic ink? ink. And all the, all the color, coloration is from the back, and then all the line work is on the surface. What is the difference between color, what's the difference between acrylic ink and acrylic Acrylic paint? ink actually acts like watercolor. Ah. Uh, it's, it's translucent. And the thing is, it allow, it, once it dries, it's waterproof. So it allows you to build up all kinds of transparent layers on top oh, wow. of it. Okay. Know? Um, so it looks like watercolor, but as we all know, watercolor tends to fade. They love them at the art supply store. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say we, we have more, more art. Ooh. Ah, yeah. This is, uh, this is one of the pieces actually that's going to be in um, the show at Loris Lessinger's. Oh, preview time, preview right. time. Okay. And this is, uh, it's called uh, CC Level One. Wow. Which again, deals very much with the idea of meditation. So each of those kind of represents the mantra. Okay. Uh, and the stuff that's in there that kind of looks like static is the, they're the thoughts that naturally come into your mind while you're meditating. That you want to just get, you, get rid of it, get rid of actually, it. Actually, no, quite the contrary. Oh, tell me. When a thought comes into your mind in, in the course of meditation, you want to entertain that thought as long as it's there. But when it goes away, you very, very slowly come back to the repetition of the mantra. And you say the mantra, so you don't say it uh, vocally. It's all kind of repeated in, in the way of a thought. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. And this is uh, acrylic paint? This is, uh, no, this is ink on Duralar. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, it's Duralar. You're like keeping the Duralar. I love Duralar. The Duralar business, uh, they... <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because it's getting harder to find. Really? They because, don't make it anymore? No, they make it, but it's just getting harder to find. Who makes because, it? Is it um, copyright? I mean, is it patented? Is, it's, it's, there's like one guy can make the Duralar for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't even think of the, the brand name now. But oh, okay. So there so, is a brand. Okay. okay. Well, don't worry. Artists, you got to find it on your own. He knows. We don't but you know, know, the thing is, it used to be one of those things that drafts people would use all the time. Uh, okay, but now everything's okay. being done on computers, so there's yeah, no need so for no it. Yeah, so no more Duralar. Right. Oh, well. So when I'm in Charlotte, I'm trying to find Duralar. Ooh. And the everybody's Duralar looking factory, at me like I had two heads. We, 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 we shut down that Duralar <laughs> factory long ago. Um, so so uh, uh, how big would this be? This is 40 by 40. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect square. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. So, um, so you're showing September, August, you're go are you going to go to Tokyo too? Absolutely. Oh yeah? <laughs> Take advantage of it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. So do we have more art? Was this it? Oh, is this, is this uh, from the red line? This is, no, these, these were the exercises to get to the red line. To get line. to the red line. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, the red car and the red line, right? And, and, and. Uh, oh, it's going to be, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Is it a red line station? You said it's three. not a red line station. Expo line? It's not the Expo line. It connects three lines, and the I don't want to misspeak. I don't know exactly. Oh, you're, you're not sure? Well, second and Broadway. I take the train enough to figure this yeah. out. Second and Broadway. But they're making three regional connectors. Three so they'll regional be, connectors. Uh, second and Broadway, then there's one at... Uh, First and Alameda right now. They're, I think they're, so. they got, That's where the big hole is. Right, that they, right, they went right, in, and right, then they right. went under. Yeah. And then and they're making another one. Are they going all the way to 7th Street, to the, to the 7th and Flower? I couldn't you don't tell. Know. Okay. <laughs> I got my tap card on me, so don't worry. Don't worry. If the Uber, if the Uber craps out, I can still get around town. So, so, and this is a sketch? No, no, no. This is a painting. Wow. I mean, it's got so much energy. Too. It's kind of like that, that improvisational right. thing. Were you, were you working frenetically in this, or is this a little more meditative? This is a little bit more meditative. It's called Three Sisters. Wow. Uh, and the thing is, the idea behind it is there are three sisters that have three very different personalities. And it actually goes back to a painting that I was uh, very much enamored with by uh, Jan Turup. Um, wow, that's he, a name. Um, not a lot of people dropping that name. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Dutch artist uh, who spent a lot of time in Indonesia and he did a painting called Three Sisters. Wow. Um, and um, at the time, Lydia Takeshita was my advisor. Ooh, you oh, I know. Oh. She, oh. Was, oh. she was brutal. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my painting teacher, too, at Cal State right. LA. Oh. <laughs> but she, 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 you know, she knew how I felt about this painting. And it was in the show that was at LACMA that was on spirituality. Okay. Um, so she gave me a book that had um, a copy of that painting in it. 
And I was just thinking about that when I was, you know, getting back into the meditative practice. And... Well, I have three sisters and they all have their own personalities, <laughs> so I can completely relate. And this is going to be like 140 feet long or, so, or some variation of this is going to be? Uh, this is, there's a certain uh, formula to what's happening with this, uh, the mural that I'm doing. This probably best captures that formula. Are you? Are you going to be up there painting on the mural, no, or is it being no, fabricated? No, it's, a, it's going to be fabricated, right? Onto some ceramic tile? Or? Uh, that's to be determined. Oh, TBD? Uh, but they're talking about um, mosaic at oh, this point. Wow. Yeah, it's, Ooh, it's going to geez. probably take two or three years just for the fabrication. Are you going to have to be there putting the tiles up? No, 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 no. I do this at a quarter scale. Ah. And even at a quarter scale, it's, it's two, huge. two and a half feet by 37 feet. Do you, do you own that one, though? Oh, no, once I, no, I give it to them eventually. Oh, okay. I have to provide them with a scan of it and then they work from the scan and then whoever the fabricator is, I have to go work with the fabricator to make sure they get the colors the right. Are you gonna fabricate it in some far off place, like exotic location so you it's, get a free vacation? That's something deal? that's not up to me. I no, mean, no, I, okay. I have oh, yeah. fabricators yeah. that I would love yes. to work with. Oh, Lugano, Switzerland by the lake, please. <laughs> close, very close. <laughs> oh, <right>? oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Mark, it's always a pleasure. Uh, you're, you're an alumni, Cal State LA alumni, but you're also a Modern Art Blitz alumni. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you. Always. Uh, love the stuff. Excited for the show. Excited for the Metro Station, too. And um, I'll be there in 2020 on the train. Um, and we'll be back right after this. Right after this. Right after this. Hey! -hey! <laughs> Wow, wow, wow.